Good evening, welcome. This is What's Your Story. I am Catherine Mwangi here today. Welcome to the show, Vikash Patni. Oh, the, the insistence that you're putting on my, on my second name. But those are your names, no? Vikash? Vikash is, is good. Vikash. Oh, that's even how to pronounce it. I love that. You, you know how Africans pronounce my name is huh. even better than how Indians pronounce it. How do Indians do Indians it? just miss the H. They say Vikas. Yes. So anyone with a name that ends with the H, they just cool out the H. And Ramesh, Mukesh, Suresh. Oh. So you're like, man. So you, it's Vikas. It's no, no, hell no. It's no. Vikash. <laughs> the way, just the way Vikash. with the H. Yes. Like that British thing. Cash. Okay. Oh, cash. <laughs> yes. right. If I had a sibling, maybe we check, we credit card like that. You're an only child. I am. No. Yeah, my parents had a TV. So. <laughs> we can't do this. Oh, show your parents. So they didn't need any other child. No. Yeah, you are actually for, for real the only child. Oh, you make it sound like I should suspect my parents. <laughs> Do you know something I don't know? As far as I know, yeah, I am the only child. <laughs> so, do you get lots of questions or whatever when your second name comes up? No, I just get like if a cop catches me, yeah, I, I've just had it. <laughs> Say, eh, oh, nini, nini, nini eh. uh -huh. Ebu twende leo. Leo! Hata sitaki lunch, nataka holiday. So I'm like, oh. Because of Patni. Yep. Right. But yeah. there's no relation, absolutely. No, none. there's no relation. But you kind of like look like a younger version of him, though. Like, oh, in wish, a good way. Oh, I wish my bank account also <laughs> did the same. Looks the same. Right now, my password and my bank account looks the same. Right. <laughs> it's four digits, but okay. Vikash, are you, a, are you a comedian? I should have told people actually what you are. So you were in the arts entertainment space and you once doubled in finance, accounts, graphic design. See, that's what's comedy. <laughs> that's the comedy part of your life. That's the comedy part of my life. But let's start then with your background. Tell me about you. Um, okay, where do we start? How I got into it? It was funny because um, I, I followed everyone in high school. And everyone, you know, the windy thing was, oh, Washwell, we'll go there. Yes. It's the thing. Uh -huh. We couldn't afford that school. And I forced my mom, like, you know, put me in that school, put me in that school. And my mom's like, yo, we can't afford it. Right. And I said, no, 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 all my friends are going there. I want to go there as well. Oh. And that's when I realized you should never propose because God disposes whatever you propose. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I, my sole purpose of going to that school was not even met because all my friends were in a different class. I was alone in a different class. In, the, in that school? Yeah. So your mom finally could afford it? We, we found somebody to sponsor me. Okay. So my parents would remove half the fees and somebody else would sponsor me. Yeah. And the condition was he better be good at academics. <laughs> and for two years, I was just pathetic. Oh? You weren't good? <laughs> oh, I was, I, was, I, was, I was like... Why is that? I don't know. I just wasn't... <laughs> something just went wrong. I was not interested. Okay. And then form three, form four, when they threatened like, you know, Hey, if this guy is not doing well, why are we sponsoring him? Then suddenly I became good. And then <laughs> okay. I was coming top five and, and, and oh, nice. that in school. Yeah. I mean, it was a class maybe of not really intelligent guys. So it wasn't that big a deal. But okay, if they're watching you saying they were not intelligent. Yeah, not all of them were. <laughs> maybe the top ten guys were. The okay. rest were just jokers. Okay. Um, what was it like growing up back in the day um, as, a, as an only child? I think the culture of growing up in the 90s was so different yeah. from now. Oh, yeah. No. Yeah. You're yeah? right. You're right. Yeah. So, yeah, I felt like growing up was fun. Yeah. Then. Now. Yeah, also because we could also, like, go outside to play. Yeah. Yeah. And so we weren't just in the house cooped up doing yeah. video games and things. Yeah. We were, like, out and you go out with your friends and, and do stuff. The neighbors were a bit far from how they are now. Right now, if my neighbor yawns, his hand can get into my house. <laughs> Especially in Parklands. <laughs> Old houses are like this close. Yeah. Okay. So, um, your parents, what can you tell me about them? Uh, parents, just very humble background. Mo mother is a complete fighter, true hero. Uh, I get a lot from my mother. Okay. My father is a very simple guy. Uh, unfortunately, I lost my mom in 2010. Oh. Um, but she was thorough, like, you know, what a, what a woman. Mm. Uh, so, I, I wish to someday get the qualities that she did. And, and I also f uh, love my father fully, like, you know, what a guy, he's a, he's a beautiful human being, yeah. great soul. Yeah. yeah. So solid grounding yeah. by both parents. Yeah. But you take after your mom more? I would hope so. 
I yeah. think I have some of her qualities. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. So you finished school. Did you still go to high school around here? Like yeah, everything, everything. I just did. <laughs> I, I remember how it was. The culture back then was if you finish high school, then everyone goes to Mombasa. Oh, why? It's just like the celebration. A holiday thing. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. Every kid who finishes Form 4 was going there. Okay. So you went. So I didn't. Because <laughs> <laughs> that was like not happening for sure. Okay. So while all my friends went to Mombasa, I joined work. And I remember I used to lift goods uh, from first floor to sixth floor. And this guy used to pay me 3K a month. Oh. <laughs> I think my house help used to look at me like, bro, you need some loan or something. Okay. You know? uh -huh. I am a bit better. <laughs> So I briefly worked there and for many years I just worked for money, whatever paid more. Mm -hmm. So I had no clue what I wanted to do. Yes. Whoever pays more, I just go. That's where you go. 3K, 6K, 8K. Mm. Uh, so I casual went. labor. Pretty you much. You could call it that. Yeah. Ah. You know, I worked at the till of a hardware shop mm. and then I was just moving around and then uh, the most affordable course back then was accounts. There's no way I was becoming a doctor. Mm -hmm. Why? Grades? Grades okay. and biology was just, you know. Not your thing. Yeah, I, I personally also would have never want to be operated by a doctor who's not really wanting to be a doctor. Imagine you <laughs> want to be an actor or a singer and then you're operating someone, you know, just, you know, fixing their arm or something and mm -hmm. in the middle of the operation, I hate my job. <laughs> That'd be <Okay>. pathetic. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, so I'd be that, that guy. Yeah. Uh, so no, doctor was out of the way. Right. Engineering also. Initially, I liked the whole concept of wires and all. And I said, man, the country we live in, mm -hmm. something might blow off and it's not your skills. <laughs> <laughs> so let's not do that either. <laughs> so the only uh, available option for me then was, which also my other friends were doing. But then they had a plan mm -hmm. after because most of them were then flying out to Australia, oh, UK. Okay. And the only UK I'd been to was Nakumet, UK. So I briefly did... ACCA, I pursued ACCA, I reached seven papers out of 14 and at the same time I used to work, uh, I used to work at an audit firm mm -hmm. and then I went to a Forex Bureau. So are you good at math? Uh, when it came to my salary, but otherwise. <laughs> so why did you then, why did you go for accounting? I think I was good at accounts then. Okay, then. Back then, Not yeah. now. Yeah, like the, the debit credit meant sense yeah. in school. Uh -huh. When you step into the real world, it's something completely different. It's not even half of what they show you in school, mm -hmm. by the way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now you know why some guys are rich. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I did okay. not say that. Mm -hmm. But yeah, uh, when I went to the real world, it was just not interesting. It was the most boring thing. Everyone was doing it. Uh, and then I got a job at a bank. I think I was 19 or 20 when I was the youngest corporate banker at that bank. And man, that, that, that was a crazy experience. Why? You know, you have to make calls, uh, say, hey, I'm from this bank. Would you like to open an account? Can you give me a meeting? And uh, the minute I would call, they would just slam the phone. And my, I remember my target per month was 30 million deposits. I didn't even get 3 million. <laughs> 30,000, <000, I> forget. <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. And it was funny because the girl who used to sit right opposite me would call the same guys and she would get a meeting and I wouldn't get a meeting. How come? I also wonder. You don't know. Yeah, but to get meetings, yeah. then I remember what I had to do. Every time I want a meeting, I'd call the number and I'd say, Hello, I'm calling you from so-and-so bank. Would you please give me a meeting? And I'd get a meeting. I'd not get the account, but I'd get the meeting. So are you saying that it has to do with gender? For sure. For sure? Oh, for sure. Did you, so you got a meeting and you, and you started to get like meetings? I would just get meetings. I would not get accounts. Because so I'd go there and then say, Hey, we talked to a girl. i say, Yeah, she wasn't feeling well. Then they would get out. True story. True story, man. True story. And I had a very mean boss. Every time I write a script, my villain's named after that guy. Because he would just be like this big guy. And like, hey, uh -huh. are you here on a holiday? Why is everyone else getting deposits and you not getting anything? Right. And that's because your heart was not in it. I had no clue what I was doing. I was there for the salary. It looked nice. It was, I think, the highest I'd earned. And then I was getting 40-something K. 40-something thousand. Mm -hmm. My first account was a strip joint. And those guys would, would withdraw the money before the month ends. So it was pointless. Like at the end of the month, I'd still have no account. <laughs> uh, so you managed to get a, a strip joint for your client? Yeah. So can you deposit money? 
<laughs> it was in town i remember oh so why you doing all of this to maybe please your parents or what no, yeah maybe you? maybe you know my mom i thought i remember was very happy when i joined the bank the she bank. thought you know yeah. my son's living the american yeah. dream now and slowly from here you become the bank manager then there mm-hmm. there's a hierarchy at the banks he sorted now mm-hmm. oh poor lady she had no clue what was coming up <laughs> and how long are you there 6 months oh it was a funny story how that happened mm-hmm. so ev- the bank would call motivational speakers every friday to motivate you okay which i think is a pathetic thing because okay. once any employee gets motivated they get quit they quit oh really yeah whoever gets motivated quits Mm-mm. no no it depends anyway on the company if uh, you work for a company you're happy working at then it's different yeah mostly if they get motivated they quit okay <laughs> so so uh-huh. so this lady came okay. so she had some software where you key in your things and she tells you what profession you're supposed to be in. You know those things on Facebook? Yeah, tap uh, here to play. Tap here yeah. and then it will tell you which actor you look yes. like. Tap here to tell you which field you're supposed I to be in. I should do that 2 days ago. You did? What like what which profi- celebrity uh are you dating? What came? Brad Pitt. Oh. <laughs> Luckily not Will Smith. <laughs> okay, would anyway. be a slap on someone's face, okay. <laughs> so I get that. So she did that with you. So she used to do that. Mm-hmm. She did that with for everyone and yeah. mine came back to not telling my mom, "Oh, this is cool. Let me convince her with this." So we paid 3000 for the visit and then it came as act and then my mom was like, "You're paying 3000 for what?" So you if you want to know what your future looks like. Yeah. Uh-huh. Or what profession you're supposed to be based on this study yeah. of this software, <laughs> then you pay 3000. And I was you can tell I had I- Mm-hmm. a very questionable yeah thinking back then but anyway uh-huh. but it was what i wanted to do i just didn't have courage to tell my mom that oh is it yeah. so you didn't even need the lady to to do her thing you i mean she came as my backup or she came as my voice ah. you know so she helped me approach my mom and tell her man this is what i want to yeah, do yeah and your mom was and my mom was like yeah even i want to be the american president just go in <laughs> <laughs> no but like then she got convinced uh-huh. uh and just around the time there's a movie there's a bollywood movie called three idiots i don't know if you've watched it Mm-mm. you must okay three idiots uh three idiots not indians three indians are, oh idiots yeah okay at the airport uh-huh idiots are <laughs> different so it's called three idiots okay so that helped because the movie is basically talking about follow your passion mm mm-hmm. So that gave me courage. I asked my mom, you know, this is what I'd like to do. She's like, I don't have the connections, I don't have the money. I'll give you all my savings, figure it out. I went, I did research. Back then there was no social media or any Google or anything. You go and ask around and I remember taking the yellow pages book. I would call all the <laughs> the ad agencies there. How do we get in? Yeah. Somebody told me you have to do a course in mass communication. Right. So I went and enrolled myself in a college uh that that offered mass communication it was the cheapest out of the three okay uh i paid for the year three months were going well then they turned out to be cons they ran away with everyone's money <laughs> and said, you had paid for the whole year i paid for In the whole year Nairobi. yes wow why do you think we call nairobi <laughs> so uh-huh. yeah then um then i i my thinking was how do i know how do actors get their gigs is if they go for auditions how like go for auditions if i know where the audition is happening where do i see where the audition is happening is on posters how will i get those posters maybe if i design it so i remember uh design was 10000 and i had 10000 so i went and studied photoshop and in design and illustrator mm-hmm. thinking if i design the posters that means i'll be able to know where the auditions are happening and then i'll go for those yeah so then i did designing uh then from a 40000 job i went down to 6000 <laughs> the, okay, yeah. Yeah. yeah so then I, again it was a journey again start all over again uh-huh. then one aid a, a, one ad agency uh-huh. <laughs> uh from one to another then freelance and then a couple of things and then 2010 i lost my mom uh i think she went up and she talked to god and said please let me handle this boy's life and then she got me a job and uh a newspaper it was a weekly paper zine it's called the asian weekly i yes, don't know if you yeah, ever seen no, it I, i've seen it when i go to my dentist like it's yeah, yeah it's always it's always there yeah yeah 
So I designed that for about a year and a half. Oh, yeah? Yeah. You are the chief graphic designer for the Asian media? Yeah, oh, I nice. used to design it. Okay. And then um, from there I found out about radio. And then I got into radio. I did How? radio for nine years. So radio, there was an interview of this guy who was a very popular drive time presenter. Mm -hmm. Local. Local, yeah. Mm -hmm. And in his interview, he had talked about why he's quitting. And so I said, oh, he's quitting. There's a slot open. Yes. You know, like, I think like, that's how most people look for jobs these days. <laughs> they go to the newspaper and look at the part where their debts. They're like, who's died? Okay, that must be a job here. I'll apply there. So I think that was the logic we all use. <laughs> no, so, so, so thankfully, he's alive and he's kicking. He's and you got the job? So there was a slot, slot open there, and then I went and I applied, I auditioned, and round two, three, and then I got the job. And yeah, then I did nine years of drive time and the breakfast, and it was fun. Okay, so you stop there for now. Yes. You just brush off nine years like that. We have to take a commercial break. We come back and we hear Mr. Patney's <laughs> rest of the story. Give people the wrong image, not that one, not the rich one. <laughs> Don't go too far. So I used to feel loneliness a lot. Growing up as an only child can bring you a lot of loneliness. Having faced a lot of rejections also makes you feel, you fear loneliness. Will I never get anyone? Will I never end up with anyone? Whatever, because it's such a big thing in today's time, anxiety, depression, everyone feels this. You can talk to a lot of friends. That moment, you'll be fine. But when you go to bed, you're back with that feeling. And I know how hard it is to get through that night because many times you feel like I won't survive till the morning. Welcome back. It's What's Your Story. I'm Catherine Mwangi having a conversation with Vikash. Full stop. Thank you. Happy? Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> So, arts, entertainment, lifestyle, now you're a radio uh, presenter with East FM. I was, yes. No, at that time. So now that that's time. where we're picking that up oh, from. Okay. Yes. So it was a totally new experience. Yeah. You had never trained to do that. You yeah. trained in the job, I assume. Or your personality was strong enough to just like, you know, you, you no, saw no, it. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was hard work. Okay. And it was, yeah, I started with a graveyard shift. Mm -hmm. um, I was lucky, I had very good mentors. I was mm. doing um, the show with the late uh, Ruhila Adat Chasud. Mm. She really helped me, she really guided me. Um, she really taught me the A to Z of radio. Yeah. So that was great, yeah. I had a very good mentor mm. in her. Yeah, yeah. wow. You, wow, you took me back many years ago. Yeah, so what's the wildest thing you remember about that experience, the nine years? It was a lot of um, ups and downs. I had a lot of great time interaction with the... I think, you know what, what it was? Somebody mm. messaged me saying, uh, my parents are going through a divorce and your voice heals me. And I was like, huh? Eh? <laughs> okay, guy. Okay, then. Uh, yeah, I was like, guy. <laughs> no, as in I'm the one saying that. Because guy, gosh. <laughs> you don't sound like you believed it. Yeah, it was hard to believe. Oh. So I have that issue. Uh, it's, a, it's a weakness in me. I can't... I crave uh, compliments, but when I get them, I don't believe them. I feel like this guy is like, just saying Yeah, you're fluffing. Yeah, you're just saying Really? You want something from me? <laughs> so I have that issue, yeah. I need to work on it. <laughs> really? Yeah. Like, you don't know, if I said to you, wow, Vikash, you look so good, then I'd be like, yeah, Catherine, what do you want? What do you want? Really? Yeah. You don't just say thank you and we move on? No. Huh. no well, I do now. <laughs> Are you saying that? Oh, thank you, Catherine. <laughs> Did you mean it? Oh, jeez. Okay, so nine years radio East FM. Um, so you started Graveyard. Did you like progress to more primer slots? Yeah, I mean, you start off the, with the Graveyard shift and uh, it used to be 11 to 12, mm -hmm. I think. And I remember the first day I, I did it, my dad was really excited and I prepared all these jokes and everything. And I went there and then I did my thing. And 10 minutes had passed. My dad calls me, he's like, you've not got to the radio station? I said, I'm, I'm on air. Yeah. He's like, we only hear the music, we don't hear you. There's <laughs> blank space in between. Then I look down and I've not even switched on the mic. I was like, great. Uh, there goes my jokes. 
So you were played on, like you didn't even like, no one heard what you said the first 10 minutes. Oh, it was, I think when I started radio, any listener who later on complimented me would say like, you were so bad. Really? I believe that. Even when I started radio, I was so bad. I think cops used my voice to torture the criminals. (laughs) Like that's how a lot of criminals accepted that they did the crime. Because they heard my voice. They were were just told like, you know, we'll play this guy. Accept it. And they're like, yeah. So I was really bad then. Uh, I, I took some time. They were, they were, the listeners, I'm very grateful to them. They were very patient with me, mm. and also the, you know, the leaders mm-hmm. then mm-hmm. were pretty patient with me, and then they allowed me to grow. Grow, and, and you grew on them. Yeah, to turn from a caterpillar to a butterfly. Yeah, so they gave me that time. Yeah. So why did you leave radio then? I just felt like there was. I was just not growing anywhere. You know, I was just mm. doing the same thing every day. Uh, I, I was just very limited. Mm-hmm. I felt like, you know, we didn't have leaders. We had bosses. Mm. So I was just, there was nothing going on. You got bored? I got bored. You get bored fast? Like well, when you do something, then after a while. I do. Like, yeah. I do, yeah. yeah. I can see that. Yeah. I mean, going by your history. <laughs> not that I have I any psychic. <laughs> <laughs> not, not that I have any psychic abilities. But yeah, going by like in accounting, six months, banks, another yeah, six yeah, months. Yeah. Uh, then now, I don't know, this now radio, well, nine years, wow, well done. This is Yeah, but you know, radio is not every day the same thing because you're inventing yeah, yeah. things. Conversations are different. Every day, yeah, yeah, it's a different listener you're targeting. Yes. Every day is a different yeah. theme to the show. And yeah. everything. But it gets boring after like, you know, you have the same pool of songs to pick from, mm. uh, you're coming up with ideas, they're going nowhere. Mm. And yeah, I wanted to get a bit higher. I wanted to get some managerial posts yeah. and it just wasn't available for yeah. me. So I felt like, you know. Forget it. And there's no growth vertically. Yes, yes. Or even horizontally, yeah. I was just there. You're just <laughs> yeah. Okay, so you left. Uh, so going back to the lady who said you should be an actor, during those nine years, were you pursuing that? I was. Uh, it's interesting how it started. It st- like I said, I think my mom went upstairs and she had a conversation with the Lord. And my first acting gig was, if I remember, 2011. I played a small role in Inspector Mwala. Oh. Yeah, it was called Rajat. And just like, you know, it's the funniest <laughs> thing is, is being a brown guy in, in Kenya, you just have a certain number of roles you can play. You later play a duka wala, mm-hmm. and everyone will say, hey, what you, this is what you're going to say. Mm-hmm. Your, your dialogues will be, what are you saying, man? Come on. <laughs> no discount, 50% only, 50%. Everyone thinks that's how we speak. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I was playing a, a guy who owned a shop, and then it gets robbed, and then Inspector Mala comes. And then after that, I got a, I got a gig on a show that aired on KTN. It was called Prem. Mm, you're on Prem. I was on Prem. Okay. Yeah, so I did that for a couple of seasons and that stopped just haphazardly. Mm-hmm. I think my big break came into TV uh, with Vashita. Mm. Uh, no one really believes I was playing Baba Vashita. Mm-hmm. So that was a challenge for a couple of years. Mm-hmm. Now is when people are identifying me. <laughs> yeah, as, oh, you're that guy. Yeah. yeah. And what was that like though? Back in the day, it was it was just weird because I was playing an old guy. Yeah. Uh, I was always in disguise, and I remember going with the crew, and everyone would give me the phones and mm-hmm. say, "Take our picture," and then I'm like, "I'm in it as well," <laughs> <laughs> and no one would believe me, <laughs> and I would just be like, "Okay," and uh-huh. take the picture. Yeah. So I got no fame out of it for a while. Yeah, it's only after it ended. Now I don't know how suddenly. Maybe I look older. No, you don't. I don't. You don't look like that character now. What do you want from me? <laughs> No. <laughs> thank you. Let's say thank you and move on. <laughs> exactly. That's exactly what you should do. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, so you do that and the radio gig as well. Yes. Mornings I used to shoot and then 7 to 2 I would shoot and then 2 to 7 I'd be on radio. And then at night if I get MC gigs or uh, anything, I'd do that. Yeah. Life was good then. then even now it is. It is. Mm. And it will even get better. Exactly. I like that. See? Yes. See, you're, you're doing well at accepting these oh, yeah, com- yeah. commendations. Thank well you. done. Well done. Yes. So, uh, are you a therapist? Like people doctor? say that actually. I love therapists. <laughs> you do? Oh, yeah. They're Why? the coolest guys because they just blame everything on your parents. It's not you. In your childhood, <laughs> your parents messed you up. That's why you have problems. 
So have you visited one? I did. You did? I did. For what? So I was doing uh, manic monologues. It was a. That's oh, I where I knew into... your name. That's where I saw you. That's where you saw me. Yes. And you said this guy is too mental. Let's get him on the show. No, I just said there's something <laughs> about this guy. What do you want from me? <laughs> uh, manic monologues happen very. I mean, of course, it was last year. Yes. But before that, I'd done theatre. I'd mostly done comedies. Mm -hmm. Of course. Uh, I mean, yeah, it cannot be another genre, man. <laughs> that's why I did manic monologues, I guess, because I was like, man. Enough of laughing at myself. <laughs> but that was deep. Oh, so you wanted something different. Actually, how that came about, I, I also can't figure it out because when the makers chose me to play that character, I was like, what did they see? Why, why me? Because mm -hmm. I've always done mostly comedies. Uh, hardly anything serious as such, you know. I would love to. I mean, my idea for being an actor was being an action star. Oh, oh yeah, like yeah, Tom loved, Cruise oh, kind yeah, of stuff? Yeah, yeah. No. Stallone, oh, yeah. I wanted to do that. It was my dream uh, mm -hmm. to experience, like, walk into a room and girls go like, why is so hot? All through life, like, I've just heard girls come and tell me, man, that guy is so hot. <laughs> like, why don't they ever see me, man? So then they... now it hits me. I was a big John Cena fan. And, you know, you can't see him. So that yeah. makes sense. <laughs> At you, what was your dream? The gushing, the, oh, my oh, gosh, yeah, like, fake gosh. Like, oh, my God, yeah. it's so hot. Like, I just wanted one woman who's not my mother to find me hot. It just never happened. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I think it has to do with your last name. Hmm? Oh, is it? They should like me more then. No. Yeah. They don't want the drama. Th there's no Any drama. Any mature woman doesn't want drama. My last so name. You, so what you're looking for is gold diggers not then? Not me. They. <laughs> they look for that. No, I you know. are looking to get a gold digger. No. Oh, 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 I see what you're doing there because my surname is also associated with gold. <laughs> what's your name? So that's, that's a thing. No, 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 oh, no. Gosh, what, what are we doing? Let's well, see what you did there. The show suddenly become political. Okay, fine. <laughs> anyway, so manic monologues. Mm -hmm. Manic monologues was interesting. Um, I didn't know I'd get like such recognition from it. Yeah. Um, so I was doing three monologues. One was... Um, of a schizophrenic. Mm -hmm. That one was very short. It was like maybe a small paragraph. Mm -hmm. It was in the start. And then there was this one that everyone really could relate to. A lot of people could. Was Which the, one? The alcoholic one. Alcoholism to me was the only option available to the child of a dead alcoholic father and an overwhelmed well grieving mother. I never really thought of myself as a person person. Only as someone who was ill but lied about how okay they were. There was once a judge had me choose between rehab and jail for ramming into an army truck after a night out in Westlands. The fact that I was blackout drunk was just a by the way. Alcoholism enslaves you slowly and softly. At first, you're drinking socially. A couple of Fridays every month with your crew from university. Boys for life! Yay! <laughs> yeah, like all the um, fancy cars, the women, yeah, the, and all, the they drugs. All deserted him. Yeah. Yeah, and then the I bought that. You bought that. I bought that. A lot of people. Did. Yeah. Everyone thinks it's my personal story. I just told you that. Yeah. Yeah. I don't drink. <laughs> you don't. I don't. Wow. Okay. So I didn't know what it would feel like to be an alcoholic, mm. but I could understand the emotions this boy was going through or this man was going through. How come? You know, they're just very. I think humans complicate things, but otherwise it's pretty similar. Everyone goes through these different emotions of being rejected. Mm -hmm. And anyone who's rejected knows that feeling of how it feels then, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. that thinking like you're a failure, mm -hmm. thinking of... They're all the same. Mm -hmm. It's like hunger. Everyone feels hunger the same way, mm -hmm. whether you're brown, white, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. any color. It's the same. The yeah. emotions are the same. Yeah. Heartbreak feels the same. Mm -hmm. So I didn't know what heartbreak, heartbreak feels like before that. I was what very, do you mean? Your heart has never been broken? Oh, when it got, it was like a sledgehammer was hit on yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. So what do you mean? You don't know what heartbreak felt like until last year? So I didn't know because before that, I'd not had my heart broken, you know. No, was, you're yeah, kidding. You're I lying. I was always in love, like on one side. And you're playing. No, with my emotions, oh. yes. Like I'd give my heart like this and they would return it like a tennis serve. So, so, so I didn't know what it feels like. <laughs> okay. And then I had my heart broken like into pieces. And before that, I was very arrogant about pain. Yeah. You know, because I felt like I lost my soulmate, my mom, mm. the best 
you know your best friend yeah, yeah. by everything like i'm in love with my mom mm. even in my wallet you'd find her picture yeah you know? yeah and then a knife through my face i've been through all sorts of funny so wait things. so a knife through your face what happened it's, I love saying this story, but we're going to stick to this one. I will. Don't worry, I'll come back. I yeah. know how to thread it. Oh, so that one is cool. not, <laughs> not that you spoke about that. You are the one I was looking for when I was stabbed. <laughs> Where's the person who can thread it? <laughs> okay. What happened to you? So these two thugs had turned up uh, looking for gifts at my house. And, uh, on, the, on the morning of uh, 14th uh, May 2015? Yes. And my dad was praying and I was asleep and they rang the bell. We used to live on the second floor. My dad went and opened the door and they were like, Sisi wa tuwa maziwa, kuna maziwa. I said, if there's no milk, there's no milk. Who comes to tell you on the second floor? There's something wrong. And the next thing I hear my dad screaming. So one guy grabbed him by the neck and the other one was at the door. So I ran, I kicked the guy at the door. Me and this guy exchanged a scuffle. And then in between us, there was a sofa and he just, I don't know from where, removed the knife and just went tap. Here. Yep. Went in here. Uh, came out there, through. The knife went through? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. You know, I, lo I love this thing because when I was at the hospital, a number of girls came and said, did they come suddenly? I said, no, no. <laughs> they sent me an email. I RSVP'd. <laughs> <laughs> did it hurt? No, no. It felt ticklish. <laughs> Same sensation, like I was shaving. <laughs> <laughs> My goodness. <laughs> yeah. The funny part is when I was at the hospital and my face was like, yeah. You know, throwing out blood. The only song that was playing in my head was Surayango Mazuri, Mama. Mama. <laughs> Tell and me I you're joking. Knife. I had a knife on my face. <laughs> wow, okay. Yeah. How long did it take you to heal? Uh, luckily, God has been very kind. Um, he was numb for a while. Mm. I don't know, maybe two, three years. Oh. Yeah. For a while, it looked like I had swollen a... I'd swallowed like a watermelon and it just... Yeah? <laughs> so you were like <laughs> yeah. one side bigger than the other. Yeah. Okay. But okay. then I, I could easily just fit in because a lot of guys who chew Mira look like <laughs> that as well. So it looked like I just had Mira in my mouth the whole day. <laughs> okay, so let's circle back now to Manic Monologue. So you were surprised that you were cast for that role? Yeah, uh, I was really surprised. I don't know where they saw me. Um, and when they cast me for that, and especially the director, when he hmm. he said, you know, this the alcoholic uh, monologue will be played by Vikash, I was like, eh, hmm. okay, this is a cool challenge. So I loved it. I loved every part of it. I think I healed through it. Uh, You're healing from the heartbreak? Not just heartbreak. I was, I was also healing from very low self-esteem. At that one point, I think my self-esteem, because I just quit radio and I was missing the, the you know, engagement, engagement interaction with your interaction, listeners, yes. Uh, how people would respond to you, how they'd speak to you. Yeah. I got ignored so much after that uh, and it was like the cycle re repeated again because after the bank, remember I was at 40 and I mm -hmm. went down. So I, after radio, I was up and again I had to start all over again because I quit during the pandemic. Uh, so it was just all sorts of things going mm. on at that time. And then when you're up there, then you have all of these friends and, you know, your phone is ringing all the time. You're invited to all of these functions or events. And then when you stop that, whether it was banking, whether it's radio uh, or whether it's dry with the gigs, acting gigs, then there's, there's nobody. And I wanted to share that story where um, I, I read uh, you went to your mom and you said to her, some guys had hurt you. Oh, <laughs> this was in college. Yes. Is that the one? Yes. I think so. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, it's a very, it's a beautiful uh, conversation yes. we had. Mm -hmm. uh, at that moment in college, everyone, there was some fashion show or something and everyone was pairing up with somebody or the other and I had no one who wanted to pair up with me. Uh, so I was very like, you know, what's wrong with me? And I think at different intervals, I'd assume everyone feels that. You feel rejected, you feel yeah. like there's something wrong with me, yeah. maybe I don't look good. Uh, so I was feeling that. And somebody had said something nasty to mm. me. And I went to my mom and I said, you know, someone saying I'm not good looking or something. My mom was watching TV and she gave me the remote and she said, what is this? And I said, it's a remote. 
She said, no, I think it's a donkey. I said, huh? And she's like, by me calling it a donkey or thinking of it as a donkey, does it become a donkey? No, it remains what it is. So whether somebody calls you something or thinks of you something, doesn't make you that. You remain who you are. Remember that. And I was like, oh man, I felt powerful then. It didn't last too long because <laughs> it just took somebody else to say something nasty and I was back to that. Yeah. And on off it happens. Yeah. But uh, whenever I remember that conversation, yeah, it, it's very empowering. Yeah. Which I think is what you should remember all the time. Yeah. Yeah. yeah right. So how is it in acting now? Like uh, what gigs are you doing? You only just told us about Prem, Vashita and you left um, out something I feel. Did I? Mm. Yeah, there was Vashita, there was, uh, I did an episode of Crime and Justice, which mm. was, was beautiful, one of mm. my, some of my best work. Mm. Uh, I recently had shot for a movie mm -hmm. uh, that released in the theatres, but then you know the, the life of an actor and filmmakers in this country is very difficult. Uh, finding finances, getting it out to the public is, is, is a mission on its own. Yeah. Okay, so do you feel like you're firmly on the path of the thing you've always wanted to do, which is acting? So it's interesting. Uh, when You know what happens is when the mind's in control, then you draw comparisons. Mm. So now you see all those accountant friends and their directors in some company, you know, all driving these big cars, they have this big house, they have multiple sources of income, uh, they take holidays every two months. <laughs> so you're like, man... I should have just done that. Okay. But when you're in control of your mind, now success is defined differently. Now, being able to have a meal with my father, going for walks with him, having that good night's sleep, we're not worried, you'll be robbed or yeah. anything, that's yeah. success. Yeah. Um, and you, you go home satisfied, yeah. you know. Yeah. Even if you're not paid in, in hundreds of thousands or millions. Yes. But that... Satisfaction as an artist that, hey, I was in front of the camera today, I mm. did this. Mm. Uh, I could do a stunt, I could ride a bike on camera. That makes you happy. Yeah. Uh, of course, you desire uh, good money from it. Mm -hmm. So I'm far from that. But um, yeah, I would say I'm happy. I'm, I'm satisfied. Yeah, satisfied. I'm satisfied. Yeah. What have your life's greatest lessons been? Uh, recently, I discovered this. I used to manage my fears, uh, so I used to feel loneliness a lot. Growing up as an only child can bring you a lot of loneliness. Uh, having faced a lot of rejections also makes you feel, you fear loneliness. Will I never get anyone? Will I never end up with anyone? Um, my recent discovery, and I would like to say, you know, whatever because it's such a big thing in today's time, anxiety, depression, everyone feels this. You can talk to a lot of friends. That moment, you'll be fine. But when you go to bed, you're back with that feeling. And I know how hard it is to get through that night because many times you feel like I won't survive till the morning. Yeah. Just know you're not alone. And the only way you'll know that is when you sit alone and instead of thinking about what is happening outside, go within. When you go within and you just sit silently, you hear a voice inside. Because everyone talks to themselves inside, yeah? So who's inside? There's somebody else. That's all. And what you desire to hear from others. So I have this habit, which I've realized recently. You know, you can, you can have 10,000 people who are complimenting you, but you want that compliment from that particular person who won't give you that compliment and that bugs you. Mm. But 10,000 other guys are giving mm. you good comments. Mm -hmm. And it's what happens for everyone as a celebrity when you put up a post on Instagram and there are tens and tens and thousands of other good, wow, stunning, beautiful. And there's one comment there saying, what kind of outfit was this? Your head will keep going mm. there, right? Mm. Forget that. It's hard. You've got to make your mind used to it. But focus on, know your audience basically. Yeah. That's not your audience. Mm. So I guess that's my biggest learning. Mm -hmm. Identify who your audience is. Maybe the one person that you particularly want a compliment from is not giving it to you and your mind is just constantly chasing it. Don't focus on the others. Mm, yeah. Like appreciate anybody else or anything else that's good. Or yeah, there's like you. tens of other things that are good with you. Yeah. But you're focusing on that one. I hear you. And I see that. Your last remarks as you say goodbye, Mr. Patney. Thank you. And let's <laughs> move on. <laughs> 
<laughs> no, uh, no, I really appreciate it. I, I think um, God's very kind and, and you need to read these messages. Here's a guy who till last year, late last year was feeling invisible. And here he is, God telling him, you think you're invisible? Hold my drink. <laughs> Yeah, 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 I love it. And no, you're not invisible. No, I'm glad. Thank no, you. No, you're not invisible. Just, oh, good. See, you're doing well. You just said thank you. See, therapist. <laughs> thank you for coming. Oh, thank you for having People me. People wanting to find you on socials? I am on Instagram. I am on Facebook. Just find me as Vikash Patni. Mm. Uh, one word in Instagram and Vikash and then Patni on Facebook. Okay. Not on Twitter. Uh, not on TikTok. Okay. Yeah, that's where you can find me. Cool. You can even write me a letter, PO Box 39683, <laughs> zip code 00623. And that old school. <laughs> ah, thanks, Vikash. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. We say goodbye. Thank you for watching What's Your Story tonight. Until next week, ciao. Gem Suites Hotel and Luxury Service Departments currently boasts two properties within Kenya. Gem Suites State House Crescent, set in the exclusive State House neighborhood, comprises of 34 well-appointed apartments and Gem Suites Riverside, set up in a secure, private, and tranquil setting. In the upscale Riverside neighborhood with 98 luxuriously appointed full-service one- and two-bedroom apartments, superior hotel rooms, and presidential penthouses.